Now, I don't know if it was because this game was very early in the morning uh, or it was because the Baltimore Ravens, they just know how to make you exhausted. But after this game, I had to take a little minute before we started sharing our post game thoughts because I was just tired, tired, still am tired. But we here now and these Baltimore Ravens, man. They beat the Tennessee Titans today, got their first official uh, win overseas. So congrats to the Ravens. Great job. Uh, but the job, it wasn't so great. Now, what's funny uh, or actually very interesting, too, during the live stream, during the game, the score was 18 to three. And somebody talked about it in the chat. They said, man, Ravens fan, why are y'all complaining? And the Ravens are beating the Titans right now. 18 to 3 you know, like it's a two score game and whatnot it's just 15 points but two score game and and i explained to them like it's because we've seen this before we've seen where the baltimore ravens have had a significant lead not a huge lead but a significant enough lead and they don't take care of business and they let the team come right back and guess what happened <laughs> yeah you already know the rest of the story thank goodness that the ravens closed it out but another one of those games just missed opportunities Missed opportunities. Ravens continue. Now, this time they won, but the Baltimore Ravens continue to be their own biggest enemy. They have got to get out of their own way, man. They really do. This is the frustrating. And, and honestly, like they won, which is the most important thing. But it doesn't like it feels like they won, but it doesn't feel like they won. If you get what I'm saying, if that makes sense. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens. How many times were they in the red zone t today? Like, a lot. Uh, they, they, they didn't have any problem moving the ball. From the 20 to the 20, they had no problem moving the ball. But in the red zone today, they just continued to fail. Now, it was nice. In, in the beginning of the game, on the first drive, first couple of drives, they moved the ball down the field. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get it. Uh, and then they kicked the field goal. First drive, I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't tripping. I thought they might go for it, but they didn't. All right, cool. No problem. And then the second drive, they moved the ball down the field. I'm like, all right, okay, no problem. Then they kicked another field goal. I'm like, okay, cool, okay, field goal. All right, here's what it is, no problem. Um, but and then Zay Flowers, he got a touchdown. I said, oh yeah, all right, Zay. I was happy that Zay got his first touchdown, man, because it's been a long time coming. And it's like I was talking about it earlier. Every week I've been expecting it, expecting it, expecting it. And this week I was like, oh, okay, I ain't expecting it. And then it, it happens. So maybe I need to be like that every week. Just be like, oh, okay. Then Zay Flowers can get more touchdowns. But anyway, um. The Ravens, they've struggled heavily in the red zone, big time. Uh, the play calling was just, it was very run, 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 run. And there was, it seemed like there was just a limited amount of pass attempts. One of probably the worst play calls that I saw today uh, in the red zone was that Lamar keeper. They had an empty backfield. They motioned Pat Ricard to the right side, and then Lamar kept it. And I was just like, not that it was a waste of a play, but I, I just I wasn't a big fan of that decision. And it just seemed to be just a lot of, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but in the, inside the red zone, it was just bad. The, the, the Ravens were bad today. Now, one thing I will say, because we got to look at it from both sides, they did continue to take their points which was great, which, hey, it, it worked out in the end, too. Them taking all them points. I think Justin Tucker hit, like, 51 field goals today. But they got, they got them all. They needed them all. And that ended up being what helped them secure the win. Now, of course, they did extend the, the victory a little bit with points, but they, they needed that, man. Them points made a big big difference. Had they not taken them, hey, they might have got more points. But, hey, they might have got less. But... They played it smart today when it came to taking the points, but they just didn't get much points. Um, Lamar Jackson uh, in this game, I say up and down. Um, he had some throws that were a little off, and of course, he's not going to hit every single throw. Um, but some missed opportunities were uh, where he overthrew. Oh, Odell Beckham Jr. And then with that one, now, had he underthrown it, that would have been a pick. But so I would, I'm glad he overthrew it. Uh, the Rashad Bateman pick. Let's talk about that one because that is uh, that, that was a huge play. Um, the Rashad Bateman pick. Initially, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that that was Lamar. Lamar threw it too high. That that, that was all on Lamar. Um, and while it was still on Lamar, Rashad Bateman just showed a lack. Where like, he's just like, oh, that, I ain't jump, I ain't jumping for that ball. <laughs> you you think I'm jumping for that ball? I ain't jumping for that ball. And it, I I don't know, man. Rashad Bateman just. Uh, 
It just seemed like some some something's off. Some something's off with Bait, man. I um I don't know what it is. I don't know if he's getting in his own head. I don't know if just him and Lamar just did this miscommunication because he did have some catches, but with that one, like he was just like oh, I'm not, I ain't jumping for that. So. I don't know. Now, of course, you you wanted to hit you in the money, and some people said that Rashad Bateman ran the wrong route. I I don't know. I I have no clue. I I don't know what happened, but um, it just the lack of effort. I know a lot of people got rubbed the wrong way with that. Um, but yeah. so uh, there was another one with Lamar Jackson. He threw a little bit high to Odell Beckham Jr. on the sideline. Um, he had just missed him. He threw it, threw it a little too high. Uh, Odell Beckham was open. Lamar was on a run as usual. <laughs> he was on a run because you know the offensive. Like, eh, but anyway, he was on a run and, and and he was scrambling, so he threw the Odell. But it was, he just 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 a little bit off. Um, then there was another one to Zay where it was off. Um, but Lamar, he he was taking some chances, man. That's one thing about Lamar this year that I, I've seen a lot more uh, significantly. Uh, he will take more chances. There was a pass that he threw to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews was double covered. I mean, it's Mark Andrews. So Lamar got all the trust in the world for him. Uh, he's, he will throw to Mark Andrews with five guys covering him um, and still expect Mark Andrews to make the play. Uh, so he threw to Mark Andrews. And Mark Andrews did such a phenomenal job of adjusting to the ball uh, while it was in the air. And it, I just appreciated it so much. Um, Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers, of course, I mean, you know, he's going to get involved each and every game. Um, with Zay Flowers, they were involving him in different ways, as usual, in the screen game. They had him doing the end of rounds. They had him doing all kind of stuff. So that's the norm for Zay Flowers and his quickness, man. Um, when you look at him and you look at Nelson Aguilar, how, how quick – both of them got some good speed. With Rashad Bateman, I feel like we haven't got to see his speed on full display yet this year. Um, simply because of the type of catches that he's received, the type of passes that he's received. And there's been some opportunities where he just let the ball slip through his hands like last week, but it, it's okay. Um, but with Odell Beckham Jr., when we saw Odell Beckham Jr. on his big play early on in the game, I was like, okay, I guess that ankle, that ankle is doing better. Because he looked better. He did not look like fast, fast, but he looked better. Um, so that's another step in the right direction so that's always good to see now um today i don't think we had any drops <laughs> hey and somebody mentioned too there were no fumbles there were no fumbles so it, it, i heard somebody say no fumbles no drops ravens get a win I said, okay i like that i like that now you just got to clean up the interceptions because we, we want lamar and them to have prettier stats and whatnot prettier numbers obviously a win is what's most important but we want the wins to be a, a little bit prettier now we know the, the the famous saying from hardball it ain't pretty but it's the ravens now look ravens they continue every week they have opportunities to make it pretty though that's the thing that's what's so frustrating ravens have a lot of talent on this team at quarterback, obviously, at offensive line, at wide receiver, at tight end, at running back. They have a lot of talent on this team, but they continue to make things ugly and make things harder than they need to be. That's why so many Ravens fans get frustrated because it seems like the team is underachieving on offense, on offense. Defense, they've been doing their thing. But on offense, they continue to overachieve, I mean, excuse me, underachieve. And this has been a, a pattern for a while now. So now we know this is a brand new offense, so it, it, it's taking time, and we just in week six. We're in week six, they sitting there four and two, and the offense has shown us flashes. We've seen little bits and pieces here and there. It's like, oh, okay, hey, once they get this thing going, hey, they're they going to be on. Ooh, I can't wait. But when are they going to get it going? When is that time going to come where the Baltimore Ravens offense turns into the Ravens offense that we know they can be? We know they have the ability to be. Now, we know Lamar Jackson has continued to talk about not peaking too early, and they, they certainly ain't even close to peaking yet, but we just we wait to see more consistency. Now, the offensive line today, um, pass blocking, they were solid. Run blocking, no. <laughs> today was not the day for run blocking. They could not get it done. Um, it was rough. Gus Edwards, he was struggling, man. He was getting a good amount of carries, too, but... He was struggling. Lamar, um, I think he was there leading Russia. I mean, what's new? Um, so I saw somebody saying, oh, okay, yeah, maybe Ravens should trade for a, a, a RB1. I was like, oh, well, that's a conversation we're going to have this week. I'll talk about it some more and some other possible trades that the Baltimore Ravens could or maybe could not do. But we'll talk about that this week. 
Um, but on to the special teams. Special teams, uh, they're the Titans right before halftime. This see, look at that. Look at smart decisions paying off. There were people, there were like 12 seconds left right before halftime. And the Ravens, they could have kicked a long field goal. They could have attempted a long field goal. But I was saying, I, I, with them punting the ball, I ain't had no problem with that because had they kicked a long field goal and made it, great, three points. Had they kicked a long field goal and missed, Titans are in decent field position. They throw a quick play, call a timeout, they're in field goal range. So now they could get points. So I think Ravens played it good, and it worked out in their favor because they punted the ball, and for another week in a row, the punt return on the opposing team, he fumbled it. And the Ravens recovered and got good field position. So they ended up kicking the field goal right before halftime, and that set them up nice. That was, that, that was really, really good, man. Um, speaking of special teams, Devin Duvernay on the punt return. Oh, Devin Duvernay. Again, we all talk about Duvernay. Straight line speed, that's him. He ain't making a bunch of cuts and all that. That's not his thing. But if the blocking's perfect, that straight line speed. Like, he, he had to take some little angles here and there. But Duvernay, that's, that's how you do it, man. That, 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 that's how you do it Y'all set that blocking up perfect for him Oh Duvernay will do the rest man. Duvernay will do the rest So it was ha we was happy to see that I think didn't, didn't they only get three from that I think they only got three from that big punt return But It is what it is they, At least they took the points Now defense Defense Oh man Favorite player defense this game Geno Stone I called him Geno Reed during that pick Even though he's a little bit slow But he's probably a little tired But Geno Stone Baller man Baller Like Again, Marcus Williams, it's the one arm again, the one arm bandit. Somebody called him a one arm bandit in the stream. I said, "Oh, that that is a name for him." He did make that real nice play where he stuck out his arm and knocked the ball out at the last second. Uh, now I did hear somebody say, "Hey, if he would have had two arms, if his other arm would be good, he probably would have picked it off." And hey, we'll never know. But we do know that he did get banged up in this game and he left this game early due to injury. Um, hopefully, it's not serious. But with Marcus Williams again, like he ain't right, man. I, I just he he is not right, and I, I I same thing we said earlier this week. They should sit him if he ain't like at least ninety percent. They need to sit him, man, because he could end up hurting more than helping. And you want him for the long run. Obviously, you want him out there because that's Marcus Williams. He's a great player. But if he's hurt, like hurt, hurt, no, man, you sit him. In my opinion, sit him. And I know it's not a popular opinion, but sit him. If he ain't right, sit him. Let Geno Stone do his thing. Let Kyle Hamilton, who got ejected in this game. Uh, it was a surprising ejection, and I said that. I, I did not know that you can get ejected from one. And now, it was a helmet to helmet. That's for sure. Ain't no arguing that at all. It was helmet to helmet all day. Um, so that's the automatic 15, but I did not know that you can get ejected for that, like, it, off of just one. I thought it had to be at least two, but what do I know? So Kyle Hamilton got ejected, and that was when the, round, when the game just started taking a turn for the worse. Um, Roquan Smith, favorite play of the game came from Roquan Smith, well, minus the Geno Stone pick, but it was toward the end of the game. The Titans, Malik Willis, because Ryan Tannehill was out, he just completed a pass to, I forgot who it was, and the receiver caught the ball, went down to the ground, Roquan Smith just staring at him. I'm like, Roquan, what are you doing? Roquan Smith still just staring at him. Then the receiver gets up. Then Roquan grabs him and tackles him. So what Roquan was doing, because it was toward the end of the game, Ravens were up, but it was still toward the end of the game, Roquan Smith was trying to take as much time off of the clock on defense as possible. I have, as long as I've been watching football, I have never seen a defensive player ever do that before. And Roquan Smith is a genius, man. He's a genius. That was a $20 million a year play right there. So shout out to Roquan Smith. Amazing. Patrick Queen. Oh, get your money, baby. Get that bread, man. Get get your bread, PQ. You're getting it regardless. Whether it's coming from the Ravens or not, you're getting your bread, man. So I'm happy for you in advance. I hope when you get that check, when you, when you tell whatever team to cut the check, when they cut it, hey, enjoy it, man. So I, I'm happy for you. Shout out to Justin Matabike. Same thing. Same thing. Justin Matabike is getting his money, and I love it. Somebody else is getting their money, but they're getting their money from the Ravens. Hashtag JC24. My guy, Jadavian Clowney, with two sacks today. And I wonder if they credit him for a half sack on another play, but he got two sacks today. I loved it. Love seeing my guy put in work. And Jadavian Clowney try to earn those incentives uh, in his contract. I hope he earns every last one of those incentives. But Jadavian Clowney has continued to ball out, man. 
this is nothing new for Jadavian Clowney with the Baltimore Ravens. He has continued to show like how and why he was a great signing and somebody that I had been calling for the Ravens to sign for years, but it is what it is. Now, somebody else who have, I wanted the Ravens to sign for years is DeAndre Hopkins. And DeAndre Hopkins in this game, man, DeAndre Hopkins, what, what was that about? All these false flags, all the, the flopping and the complaining and the why. I said, whoa, d Hop, wait a minute. Is this, you, you using that, 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 that superstar status? I said, okay, I get it, I, I guess. But I just, I was like, whoa, d Hop, man. I just, I, thought I wasn't a big fan of it, but, you know, I still got love for D-Hop. That, that, that's, that's, that's my guy, but um, I, because uh, he had been balling the past couple of weeks and whatnot. Today wasn't the best game for him, which, hey, I appreciate it. I was a little bit worried when they showed this stat. They showed this stat like, oh, longest, uh, most catches in a row without scoring a touchdown. And it was D-Hop. It was, it was him. And I was like, oh, boy, because, you know, Ravens, they love breaking some records. I was hoping, oh, Ravens, please don't don't break this record with D-Hop. And they didn't, which was great. But they D-Hop was getting some crazy calls called for him. Crazy stuff. Um, now, there was the defensive pass interference on Marlon Humphrey. Now, somebody did say that Marlon Humphrey hooked his arm. Now, if that's true, okay, I get it. But then there was another one on Marcus Williams, where Marcus Williams was making a play for the ball. And they called pass interference on Marcus Williams. And I was like, what? What is going on, man? How, what? Like, and there was more stuff. There was another. The, oh, the roughing the pass on Michael Pierce, that was a terrible call in my opinion because there was literally nothing he could do, and it wasn't like he there was there it was this like nasty or, or dirty hit on Ryan Tannehill. There was literally nothing he could do. It wasn't a dirty hit. It wasn't even late. They called rough in the pack. I said, "Wow, this is crazy. This is crazy." And I remember early on in the game, the Titans had three points. But those three points only came from the two calls that the Titans got, the two crazy penalties that the Titans got uh, in favor of them. The, the defensive pass interference on Marlon Humphrey, but then the, the Marcus Williams pass interference on the same drive, too. And that moved the ball way down the field, made it easy for him. But the Ravens held him to three points. Um, Derrick Henry, the Ravens did a pretty good job of uh, holding it down um, against Derrick Henry early on. Like, for the, the grinded out type of runs, they held it down. But then Derrick Henry, he started getting loose. So he bounced it to the outside and he would just be untouched. He'd just go galloping down the sideline, galloping down the sideline, running free. Oh, I got it. I, I'm getting over 100 yards today. Yeah, I got my nice red cleats on. Da, 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 da. Uh, so it was like, it was weird, man. It was a weird type of, it was just a very weird, exhausting game uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I think with Jeffrey Simmons. Zay Flowers had caught a pass, Jeffrey Simmons. Went and sort of like dove at his ankles. And it, it was a dirty play. It was a dirty play. Thank goodness Zay, Zay Flowers is straight. Um, but, I mean, you see stuff like that and it's like, man, come on now. What, 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 what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, uh, Are we playing football? Are we just going out there tr intentionally trying to take somebody out who you know can make some plays? Or what? Like, what, what are we doing, man? Um, so that was frustrating to watch. Odell Beckham Jr., he jumped in there, gave Jeffrey Simmons a little knee. And then Jeffrey Simmons pushed him. Odell did a little extra acting on a push. And then he got the 15-yard the penalties. Because Odell Beckham was like, all right, DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins, you've been doing it all game. I can do the same thing too. So he used his superstar, his superstar and his player privilege to get that flag, man. But anyway, um, good, good job on the Ravens getting the win. It, I, I, I want to say good win for the Ravens. I mean... Can you ever call a, 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 a win a bad win? You can, but you won. So is it really that bad? Um, but just a, a very frustrating win for the Ravens. Because, again, uh, offense just, they were lacking. They were, they were lacking big time. Defense, they just continue to do what they do. Oh, Calvinoy. Calvinoy had a really good play, too, and he had a sack. But Calvinoy uh, had that pass, with, that pass that he tipped it, uh, and that just changed everything. Um, so shout out to him. He has been Wonderful addition immediately. Right away. Came in, boom, balling. So shout out to him. Um so yeah, that was that, man. That was that. So this was a uh shout out to the Ravens for getting the win. Shout out to all the Ravens fans who got to see this live. They got to witness history. Cause the Ravens, yeah, they got their first win overseas. I, I was expecting and hoping that it would be a blowout. Uh it had every reason to be a blowout. I was thinking, all right, going into halftime, I think it was 18-3. I'm like, all right, okay, cool, man. Hey, coming out of second half, Ravens, hey, this way you start clicking, you take over. Nope, 
Raven said, nope, nah, that, that's not our style. Blowing teams out, please. You you know we don't do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so they'll get it together. Next week they got the Detroit Lions, so that will be a tough, 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 tough game. Because Detroit Lions, they're playing pretty good right now. Uh so Ravens are gonna really have to step it up. But shout out to them, man. They'll cross that road when they get there. Uh, but team, keep it clean. Thank you. Thank you for watching the, the live stream with us today. We had a lot of fun in there. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you do not miss not a single thing. Subscribe, turn your notifications on so you can be notified of every single video that comes out every single day. Uh, I love y'all. I, I appreciate y'all so much. I appreciate you all's positivity. I appreciate you all's all your encouraging messages, not to me, but to each other. Um, somebody ever going through anything, y'all always there to uplift them. Uh, y'all always just have a lot of fun on here, which is the most important thing, uh, because it just it's a nice little break from whatever people going through here and there. It's a nice little time away from any stresses that people got going on just to get together and talk about some football for a little bit. And that's it. Uh, but I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all can have a great week. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, and just y'all stay blessed, man. I appreciate you. And we out.